Okay, so in the last section, we have seen that the matrix transformations are the linear transformation. But in this section, we're going to talk about linear transformations are actually matrices. So basically, linear transformations and matrices are equivalent. So let's look at this example. So suppose that T is the linear transformation from R2 to R3, such that T of E1 is given by this, and T of E2 is given by that, where E1 and E2 are given in this way. So, these two vectors are kind of the special vectors. So basically, if you form a matrix using these two vectors as column, then you get the identity matrix, which is given by 1, 0, 0, 1. Also, these two vectors are the standard unit vectors, x and y, in R2. So the goal for this exercise is that we want to represent the linear transformation T as a matrix. So first of all, let's observe that we can decompose the vector x into the linear combinations of E1 and E2, namely x1 times 1, 0, plus x2 times 0, 1, and this equals to x1, E1, plus x2, E2, and number two, we're going to use the fact that T is a linear transformation. Or we can split the addition in this way. So T of X equals to, we have T of X1, E1 plus X2, E2. But we can split the addition and factor out X1 and X2. And that gives you X1, T of E1 plus X2, T of E2. And now we know these two quantities. So TE1 is given by 2, 3, 2, negative 3, and 6. And TE2 is given by 1, 0, 8. So this gives you 2x1 plus x2, negative 3x1 plus 0, negative 6x1 plus 8x2. Or if you write this as a matrix equation or a matrix vector product, we get 2, 1, negative 3, 0, negative 6, 8, multiplied by x1 and x2. So if you let this matrix equals A, then this tells you that, well, T of x equals to A times A times x, where A is given by 2, negative 3, and negative 6, and 1, 0, 8. And note that the columns of A corresponds to TE1 and TE2 above. So we can tell that this matrix is actually given by T of E1 and T of E2. So here's a theorem that summarizes the observation above. So suppose that T is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, then we can find the unique matrix A such that T of x equals to A of x, such that t of x equals to a times x. So here, so here, a is defined by the image of e1 through en over the given transformation t, where e sub something is the unit vector that only has non-zero thing at the ith location. And we call this matrix A as the standard matrix. Okay, so let's pause the video and try this exercise before I give you the solution. Okay, so let's solve this problem together. So first of all, you want to see how T, the linear transformation, acts on E1 and E2. So basically, we have to calculate T of E1 and T of E2. So T of E1 is the same as 3 times E1 which gives you 3, 0. And T of E2 is 3 times E2. That gives you 0, 3. So from here, we can tell that the standard matrix A is given by T of E1 and T of E2, which is the same as 3, 0, 0, and 3. And that is 3 times the identity matrix. So if you draw this in X1, X2 plane, so if you have a unit square over here, then T dilate the given square 
in a factor of three, so the result is three times larger than the original one. So this vector is zero three, and that vector is three zero. Okay, so this exercise is about the matrix representation of the rotation. And this is the counterclockwise rotation by an angle theta. So you can give it a try finding the standard matrix of T before I give you the solution. So first and foremost, um, to figure out the standard matrix for T, we need to see how T acts on E1 and E2. So to calculate these two, it might be easier if you draw the picture to see what's going on. So suppose that you have a union circle centered at 0, 0, the origin, then E1 corresponds to this vector, and E2 corresponds to this vector on x2 axis. And now if you rotate these two vectors by theta, then we get TE1 over here, and TE2 should look like something like this. So here, we know that the coordinate of this point is cosine of theta and sine of theta. So we can tell that T of E1 is the same as cosine theta and sine of theta. And also T of E2 equals to cosine of pi half plus theta and sine of pi half plus theta. And if you apply the cofunction identity in trigonometry, you get negative sine of theta and cosine of theta for t of e2. So from here, we can cook up the standard matrix where t of x equals to a times x. So a equals to t of e1 and t of e2. And if you plug in these two into the columns of a, then that gives you cosine of theta minus sine of theta sine of theta and cosine of theta and this is the standard matrix for the rotation so we have seen several matrices act geometrically so the first one was the projection of points into x1 x2 plane and the second one was the shear transformation that transforms the union square into kind of the tilted parallelogram and the third one was the dilation that enlarge the given unicircle into the circle of radius 3. And the last one was a counterclockwise rotation by theta. So if you have E1 on X axis, then this will rotate E1 by the angle theta over here. And there are more cool goldfish pictures in the textbook at page 74 to 76. So if you want to see more example about the linear transformation, then this would be the right place to look at. The map is onto or surjective if you can find x in the domain such that your vector b sits inside the image of that vector x. And the map is one-to-one -one provided that you have the unique such x. So in other words, no two element in the domain map to the same thing. So suppose that you have a linear transformation defined by the matrix A, where matrix is given by 3 by 4 matrix. Then how do we tell whether T is onto or surjective? So being onto means one can solve for this matrix equation. So if you look at the matrix above, we have pivot positions for each rows. Then this tells you that AX is B is consistent. Or this means that for every b in R3, we can find x such that b belongs to the image of that x inside R4. So by definition, we can tell that t is on 2. So here, when it comes to 1 to 1, it's really important to have the unique solution. Or in other words, we need to see whether the matrix A has the free variable. So if you look at pivot columns of the given matrix, then we have a free variable, x3. So A has a free variable, and this means for every B in R3, 
ax equals to b, this matrix equation has infinitely many solutions, and this means t is not 1 to 1. So here, this flipped a is a mathematical symbol that means for every or for all, and that came from the large A in all or the large A in the arbitrary. So whenever I write like this kind of the flipped A, then this just means for every something. So the last theorem tells you when a, when a matrix transformation is one to one or on to. So if you have a linear transformation with standard matrix A, then T is one to one if and only if AX is zero has only one trivial solution. And this was equivalent to half the column vectors of A's are linearly independent. And second, and T is on to if and only if the columns of A spans Rm. So if you use this theorem to the previous exercise, so I quickly copy the matrix here. So we can observe that the number of columns is bigger than the number of rows. And this tells you that the column vectors are linearly dependent, which gives you T is not one to one. And if I say the columns of A to be A1 through A4, the span of these four vectors equals to R3 was equivalent to tell that for any B inside R3, you can write B as a linear combination of these vectors. And it's equivalent to have AX equals to B is consistent.